So in this video today, we're going to be talking about the stretch shortening cycle. Now the stretch shortening cycle relates to the stretching of the muscle and then the reflex activity that occurs that causes a contraction. Now in its basic form, this is called the myotatic reflex. The myotatic reflex, if we take a look at, uh, at my knee and my quadriceps, can be uh, illustrated as such. If we had a hammer, but I'll use my hand in this case, and it hits the patellar tendon, like so, we have the typical reflex reaction. Why does that happen? Well, when I hit that tendon, the tendon is indented and it stretches my quadricep muscle. Inside my quadricep muscles, of course, are what are called extrafusal fibers, which is the muscle itself, but there's also intrafusal fibers. These intrafusal fibers are known as muscle spindles, and the responsibility of muscle spindles are to detect the extent of changes in range of motion and the rate at which muscle changes in range of motion. Now, the muscle wants to protect itself, and if it senses that the muscle is going to be strength, uh, stretch too far, then what it wants to do is to contract in order to protect. So what's again will happen is that I will stretch the quadriceps, a signal goes back to my spinal cord, to the motor neuron, monosynaptically, so one synapse, and activates a group of motor neurons of the quadriceps, sends that signal down, depolarizes those quadriceps, and then I get the kicking action. So once again, we have hitting the tendon, stretch the quadriceps, spindles detect, send signal back to the spinal cord, contraction of the quadriceps, leg kicks. Now that's a very simple reflex, but we can use that reflex to our advantage when we're jumping. In addition to the reflex action that we just talked about, there's another component to the stretch shortening cycle as well, and that's the mechanical component. So we just mentioned about how the tendon works to activate the muscle spindles to have that myotatic reflex. But the connective tissue within the muscle and the tendon acting as connective tissue acts like an elastic band. So you can imagine if we had something elastic, such as we have here, that when we stretch that elastic, it snaps back. So when we're, doing, when we're using the stretch shortening cycle, what we want to do is we want to take advantage of those two effects, the reflex effect and the effect of your connective tissue acting like an elastic band. So for example, if I'm going to do a jump, I could do a jump in a number of different ways. One way to do it would be just to go down and rest at a certain position. Now that I'm rested at a certain position, the muscle length has changed but I'm keeping that position. So the reflex, which only takes perhaps less than 100 milliseconds, around 100 milliseconds, or one tenth of a second, has turned off. And I've stretched my uh, connective tissue, but it's starting to creep back. And so if I jump now, we'll see how high I can jump. So we can see that height, a 14 inch jump. We'll just put the back in its original position. So that's called a squat jump. A squat jump does not take advantage of the stretch shortening cycle. Now if I want to try and take advantage of the reflex and the connective tissue, I'll want to try and stretch my muscles at a faster rate. The faster I can stretch them, the greater I'll activate that stretch shortening reflex and get a greater activation of my quadriceps. Also, it'll make my muscles, connective tissue, and tendons act like a bigger rubber band that'll snap back. So what I'll do now is what's called a counter movement jump. And a counter movement jump, I'll go down fairly quickly and go right back up very quickly in order to take advantage. So now we'll start. So this time, I've gone 19 inches. So I increased my jump by 5 inches by taking advantage of the stretch shortening cycle. When I move down quickly, I stretch my quadriceps, I stretch the spindles, I got a reflex reaction. When I went down quickly, I stretched my connective tissue, I got a rubber band. I snapped back up and took advantage of that rubber band and the reflex action. So when people are doing activities such as plyometrics, which involves a lot of bounding and hopping, um, this takes advantage of the stretch shortening cycle. Sometimes with plyometrics or other activities, you can be at too great a height and inhibit the stretch shortening cycle. So what's going to happen now, I'm going to jump off this table and see if I can get 
as high a height as I did with the counter movement jump. So here we go. All right, this time I could only jump 12 inches. So you would, uh, you would ask yourself, he stretched his muscle, he should get a stretch shortening cycle, he should be able to jump higher, what happened? Well, the problem was the transition time or the contact time. Remember I said that the reflex takes 100 milliseconds or less. When I jump from too high a height, I have to absorb the shock of landing. So to absorb the shock of landing, I was on the ground for probably 300 milliseconds or 400 milliseconds so I wouldn't hurt my knees or my back. So the reflex had already gone. And then the rubber band action of my, con my, of my connective tissue already snapped back by the time I took off. So similar to the squat jump where I went down and I held that position, I lost the reflex, I lost the rubber band effect, and then I jumped up. And my squat jump wasn't as high as my counter movement jump. So in order to effectively use your stretch shortening cycle, for each individual there is an optimal height that you can jump where you can utilize that reflex without being on the ground too long. Another aspect is that when I jump from a great height, there are organs in my tendons called Golgi tendon organs. These Golgi tendon organs detect tension and they're inhibitory. So if I'm jumping from a high height and there's lots of tension, being my body weight from a high height, hitting the ground, they send an inhibitory signal back to my spinal cord, to my motor neurons, to turn them off, to inhibit them. So not only did I get it, uh, uh, my stretch reflex was delayed, my connective tissue had already bounced back, but then the Golgi tendon organs tend to turn off the motor neurons, and thus I don't jump as high. So in summary, stretch shortening cycle, you want to get the optimal height for the muscle spindles to react to get the reflex, and you want those connective tissue to snap back in time so you can take advantage of both those effects to get the greatest jump possible.